All right, welcome back to Structure Free Office Hours. And here we're gonna discuss angle of twist. So if you've been introduced to the angle of twist, this might be a good review discussion. So if I have a, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to draw this, but here, let's see, if I have a circular shaft, this, okay? And you know, I'm thinking of my arm, really, and it's connected to a wall back here like this, that, and this right here. And I apply a twist, an external torque to it that looks like this. We'll call this like, I don't know, T-naught, some concentrated torque, right? If I took a line on the outer diameter of the shaft, this would be before, right? And now it's twisting it like this. And so here, at this point right here, with the, like if I twist my arm right here, look at look at this line right here, and it's fixed and I twist it, this point, does it at, at all twist right here? No, and it twists close, as I get closer to my hand, this line on my shirt mm -hmm. is now like way over, this one's way over here, even though it's over here. So really, this one is twisting like this, so the deformed, the deformed line would look like that, yeah? Mm -hmm. That would be the deformed line. And on the cross section here, here, if I look at the cross section right there, there is this twist happening at the end. So where my wrist is, mm -hmm. you see that twisting happening at the end. And, and this right there, that twist, this right here, is the angle, angle of twist, okay? All right, all right. And this, this thing has a length. This thing has a length, L. But if I looked, if I look at, look at, so this angle of twist, is it constant? Is it, con no, it's not. It's like varying, right? Mm -hmm. It's varying. If I, if, I if I looked right here, if I looked at right there, cross section right here, would that angle of twist be more or less? It'd be less, yeah? Okay, good. So, so what, what we're finding here is that it's dependent on the length where I look at, mm -hmm. right? So this angle of twist depends on where I'm looking at in terms of the length. Is that symbol phi? That is the symbol phi, okay. yes. That's the Greek letter phi for angle of twist. And it would have units of radians and stuff. What would happen? What happened? And then this arrow, this double arrow, does that signify torque? That is the double arrow is a, a, the external torque. So I would put my thumb in that direction and mm -hmm. it curls in that way. Okay. So this, this torque is like curling like this. Okay. Yeah, so I put my thumb and that's the direction of curl. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so that, that is true, right? So what happens is if I were to look at a differential slice of this right here, let's see if I could even draw this, a differential slice. So differential. So here, if I take a slice, right here, this, mm -hmm. and this would be like dx, mm -hmm. like this, okay? And, and and so here, oh, let me see, am I gonna be even be able to draw this? <laughs> so here is this initial line, uh -huh. like this, and then once I apply a torque, there's like a torque on the inside of it, and like, you know, the slice and the other, from, yeah. okay, there's a torque on the, on the both sides. Right, it's twisting this segment, and this is my deformed, like kind of state. In fact, it would be like uh, uh, we know from shear stress, it would kind of look like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this this initial rectangle would deform by shear strain into this shape right here, and then if I look on the cross section, it would look like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. and oi, oi. Oi. Oh man, this is getting, this is getting kind of crazy. Oh, oh, and this right here, I'll put a little dotted line, would look like this, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, and, and this portion right here is this angle of twist, and in this case, um, if, if you can look at that, this, that little part right there, we would call that, let's see if I can zoom in here, I would call that D phi. Right? Oh, okay. The differential angle of twist, right? And this segment right here, this, this, this portion right here, mm -hmm. okay? That portion right there is like this length, okay? Mm -hmm. And, and if I, if I look right here, this from here to here is also, it's the same DX, yeah? Mm -hmm. And what's even crazier is that, you know, like from our understanding of, of shear strain, this angle right here is the shear strain gamma, yeah? Uh, 
Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that shear strain gamma. And this, this, this portion right here, this, let me, let me use blue. This would be the radius, right? That row, like mm -hmm. this. And, and depending on where I'm looking at, I could look at it here and be row, whatever, you know what I'm saying? It'd be row. And so what I have here, do you remember like in calculus when they were doing, you know, like for small angle deformations? Oh, maybe even in dynamics we did this. We had ds rho and d theta mm -hmm. in calculus. And we said that for small uh, arc yeah. lengths, we said ds is rho d theta. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So here, I could say that this segment, if I zoom back in here, this segment right here, if I call that ds, mm -hmm. right? If I call that ds, that red is ds, <coughs> and that ds is equal to rho times d phi, which is equal to gamma, the shear strain, which is just a, a, a length, I mean, I'm sorry, an angle, gamma times dx. Do you, if, do you buy that? Yeah, yeah. You buy that? All right, good, 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 good. I, I buy it too. Wait, on the paper, is this one row or this one row? Uh, row would be from here to here. Okay. Yes, yes. In the notes, yes, 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 yes. And row is really any distance to where I want the shear strain, right? So the way I've drawn it right here, I drew it to the outer surface, right? Mm -hmm. Here I drew it to the outer surface, which would be the max shear strain, mm -hmm. right? But it's, it, you know, and then, uh, or the max strain, but I could do it to any intermediate distance row, which would be some strain. Yeah. But this outer surface would be the max, right? Mm -hmm. It would be the max, okay? But it's all good. It, the relationship ends up being the same. And then here, this d phi would be gamma over rho times dx, yeah? And, and then here, the, 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 the challenge here is, let's see, I have gamma and rho here. And rho is any distance, right, from the center to the outer surface or wherever, in between even. So by Hooke's law, from Hooke's law, from Hooke's law for shear stress and strain, Hooke's, I would tau is equal to g gamma right here. And if I substitute this, I would say gamma is tau over g. So I'm going to put that into this relationship. So here, d phi is equal to tau over g rho times dx right here. And then... And then from the definition of shear stress due to torsion, I would say this tau is T rho over J. And so if I substitute that into there for tau, I would get T rho over G J rho dx. And the rows cancel, bye bye, mm -hmm. right there. And this says D phi equals T over GJ DX, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so now what it, what, you know, and all this is saying to me, and I'm gonna go over here on to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go right here. So now if I, if I have a length, an entire length of a segment, that means if I just integrate to get the entire angle twist for over that length, then all I, ha I, all I have to do is integrate. And so here, phi, the angle of twist would be from whatever length I need, mm -hmm. T dx over g j and and depending on on the on the rod this could, the internal torque can be varying or depending on the loading mm -hmm. right or if I have like a tapered rod or something my mo polar moment of inertia could be varying okay. and this would be this mm -hmm. so and but if I have a constant internal torque then this and my you know if I have j is constant so in the case I'll just rewrite this over here in the case where, so here is this relationship phi, this angle of twist, and if I have a constant internal torque, okay, and a constant J, and assuming the same material, mm -hmm. so G, then this thing just reduces to like the integral of DX. So that's why we could use like um, TL over gj mm -hmm. and we're just summing the you know and then we're gonna have discontinuities and things just like we've done before yeah. and we're gonna sum those parts up to get the angle of twist okay. and that's it that's the angle of twist in a nutshell hey